And she sang, I have stolen fortunes and I have sought and bought. And I slept over thirty years beneath the tainted stars, but to myself into my heart. And in the night behind my head, I could have just one more night between the God and God. Yes, give me one more glorious night between the God and God. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, all. Hey, give us another. Oh, settle down now, Philip. Starting to sound just like your wife. <laughs> oh, I kid, I kid, of course. His wife ain't nearly so polite about it. <laughs> oh, ladies, gentlemen, and not so gentle gentlemen, it's good to be back in Shepherd's Bay, where the men drink like real men. And the women are honestly unfulfilled and looking for company. <laughs> ah, for those of you who have been living on your fishing boats or under rocks the last ten years, I am Robert Harper, teller of tales and singer of song. It has been my sacred duty, entrusted to me by Lord Dern himself, to travel the world collecting the stories of our time. At least that's what he said. I expect Lord Durham would have said just about anything to keep me away from his daughter. <laughs> <laughs> and so travel I did. And learn things I have. Things you might not believe. For instance, did you know Elgar and Lars are real. So and lads. <laughs> Brothers they are. And you give him the go ahead and Lars is all hands he is. <laughs> but no matter how far I went, I always come back to Shepherd's Bay. And it just wouldn't be right to come all this way without tipping a cup here at the battered goblin. Battered Goblin, were I to ask you to close your eyes and imagine a goblin, chances are your minds would conjure up those murderous little green buggers, all teeth, with skin like blood pudding left out in the sun. But did you know that's only one kind of goblin? You see, Way back in the days of the Feck Empire, goblins were the equal of any dwarf, elf, human or robber. Even the orcs paid them respect, for goblins were and are the masters of the flow. Bollocks! Ah, worry not, Walter. The master of bollocks is, was and always will be your very own Uncle George. Yeah! <laughs> As I was saying, each of the godly races come from a courtier what composed one of the celestial songs. Cain wove the celestial song of change, and Cain poured it into the goblin blood. Folks like to say humans is the most adaptable of the races, but humans build fires and wear furs when it's cold, and they carve out new rivers to grow crops. Humans change the world to suit themselves. Goblins, on the other hand, change themselves to suit the world. Goblins will grow their own fur when it's cold. And if there's no crops, goblins will eat whatever's available. Goblins is everywhere. Ah, you say, but there's no goblins in the frozen wastes of northernmost of Aquilier. And I answer, you are mistaken. The mountains there are packed with gnolls. And gnolls is goblins what grew fur to keep warm. Dog-like noses to track their prey. And strong jaws to bite through bone. They got bigger too. 
to bring down the wild shag oxen that roam up that way. But, you say, surely there cannot be goblins in the swamps of Drenufan. And to that I merely shake my head and say, look at the bog skimmers, those webby frog-like folk. What's a creature toxin through their skin to paralyze the fearsome creatures they couldn't hope to bring down with force? And what puff up their bodies and petrify them when they die, so the other skimmers can live inside them? They too is goblins. The goblins is everywhere, my friends. We just call them by different names. Kobolds, Hobbies, Bugbear, Bluejack, Vesk, and of course, those little green buggers. They're all goblins, what have adapted to their environs and flourished. But when you're about flourishing, you don't need to go elsewhere. And so you don't need to go on adapting. After a few generations, they forget they even can. A few more still and they's locked into their shapes from birth. They still goblins, but they lost the flow. True goblins, them is what remember and keep alive the teachings of Cain, refer to these as mutts, and look upon them with pity and or contempt. True goblins, you see, adapt themselves to whatever the locale calls for. Gills, wings, tails, claws, fur, scales, whatever is needed and whatever is not, comes and goes with the flow. They can even make themselves look like other races. How come we don't see it then? Well, you can't see nothing, Liz. You've been staring at the inside of a mug your whole life. <laughs> oh, but that is otherwise a fair question. And the fair answer is that unless you travel with a true goblin, you likely never will. As growing a tail ain't like changing your socks, which you also never do. <laughs> Takes a bit of time, it does. And more than it used to, I'm told. At least... It takes time for most. There are some as can wield the flow as a painter wields her brush. But again, most folk don't know these as goblins. And here I'll speak of the doppelgangers, mist folk, shadow lurkers and the like. For them, the flow is so strong, they can change form in seconds. And you bleed, they got no set form at all. Goblins they are, but like the mutts, they forgot where they come from. And the true goblins call these jellies. Now then, I'll expect you're wondering why I am sharing this tale with all of you. And the answer is this. When you live a life of adventure, you usually end up either rich or dead. Now I... I've seen plenty of adventure and I stand before you, still breathing. But I think it's time for me to give up the adventure in life. And there's no place I'd rather grow old than here in Shepherd's Bay. Now Henry, Henry's a fine barkeep. And he served us well for as long as most of us can remember. But earlier tonight, Henry comes to me. I'm getting a little long in the tooth, says he. Spent most of my life inside this room, and I want to spend more of my remaining time fishing and drinking. And he offers to sell the battered goblin to yours truly. Henry's always been good to me, so how could I refuse? Come tomorrow, I will be the new proprietor of this establishment. However, however, while most everything will remain the same, I must, in good conscience, put to rest the name of the battered goblin. Starting tomorrow, 
this bar will be known as Jellies and Mutts. Oh, oh, oh. Settle down, settle down. Easy, easy, easy. Now I know Shepherd's Bay ain't all that fun to change, but changing always bad. Philomena Cooper, remember when King LJS banned the sepulchre and spices you used to make your famous Shepherd's Bay red? Aye. Well, that was a most unwelcome change, wouldn't it? But were it not for that change, you would never have discovered a secret to your vastly superior Shepherd's Bay Bonfire Black. Inarguably the best wine east of the Stirling River. Now, I could tell a similar story for each of you here and double for me. But in all my travels, from the wild Safayan forests to the sweeping Sepulden plains, from the halls of the lost King of the Ditch to the blood and dust slave pits of Teok, one common thread unites our stories, our trials and our songs. Change. Change comes to us all. We can either accept it and ride Cain's song wherever it takes us, or we can chain ourselves to the past and disappear beneath the waves. With Henry off, this place will never be the same. And I would not dream of trying to best him. He hammered in the first post of this bar, saw it through good times and bad, and not a one of us could have asked for more. So it is not to buy your goodwill, but to honour a dear friend, and to ease our transition into this change that I declare here and now. No resident of Shepherd's Bay shall ever pay for a drink or a meal at Jellies and Mutts. <laughs> and now, my friends, let us celebrate with a drink and a song! <laughs> <laughs>